and here we are at SeaTac Airport on our way to Mammoth, California. Getting ready to hike the John Muir Trail. I'm excited. So the plan is to fly from here to Denver, and from Denver to LAX. In LAX, I'm actually gonna meet Zuzu and we're gonna catch the same flight into Mammoth, California. And from there, we'll be taking the shuttle to Tuolumne Meadows and uh, setting up camp at the Tuolumne Meadows campground. Uh, there should be a backpacker section there for us to backpack out or uh, camp in. And then uh, we have to be in line at like 3, 3.30 in the morning to see if we can get our permit. So I'm not going to be able to relax until we got that John Mayer permit. So here we are at LAX and uh, I actually met up with Zuzu in Denver. We didn't know we were going to run into each other and she found me. I walked right by her. So um, we're now sitting in uh, LAX getting ready to get on the plane for Mammoth. Uh, at least at least we, we think we're going to be getting on the plane soon. It's been delayed due to a thunderstorm, so we run into our first hiccup, so we'll see what happens. So, after a two-hour delay, me and Zuzu are finally leaving Mammoth Lakes. Um, to Mammoth. Oh, sorry, going to Mammoth Lakes. Yeah, see, now I'm confused at this point. Um, so we're leaving LAX going to Mammoth Lakes, and we're going to attempt to land there. There's a possibility, as I said earlier, that this plane may turn into a boomerang and have to come back to LAX because they don't know if they can land there. There's a small percentage chance that because of wind and inclement weather that we might be coming back to LAX. So we'll see how it goes. Well, we are finally here. It is past seven o'clock at night and we are in the backpackers campground. There's Uzu behind me, looking for something to eat it looks like. <laughs> and we are exhausted. So the plan is we are going to turn in early and we are gonna get up at two o'clock in the morning and be in line at the Wilderness Information Center by 3.30, no later than 3.30, so we can pick up our walk-in permits. This campground is actually super crowded, tons of people here, but we're right in the heart of PCT season. She's rocking her uh, Big Agnes Copper Spur. Is this a one or a two? It's one. This is a Copper Spur one, and then I'm sure you guys would be shocked to see that I got my hammock hung up back here. So, yep, that's gonna be it for us tonight, folks. And uh, we have one more day to stay in this backpackers camp before we get the uh, permits, uh, if all goes according to plan. See you guys out there. Hey guys, it's uh, 2.35 in the morning, and uh, you can see my red light. You probably can't see anything behind me, but me and Zuzu are walking the, down the road at this ungodly hour to uh, go stand in line at the Wilderness Information Center to make sure we're first to get permits. This is probably way overkill, but we flew in from two states and she came in from across the country and we don't intend to fail at this. So, wish us luck. Hey guys, we're here at the Tuolumne, uh, Tuolumne Meadows Wilderness Center and this is the line for the permits. It is about eight o'clock in the morning and we're gonna be here till 11 to pick up our permits. So it is a long wait. And success. So uh, after staying in line for how many hours were we in line? Another three to eleven. Three to eleven. So eight hours. Yeah. So yeah. So a full day of standing in line since three o'clock in the morning. But we did get our permit out of Tuolumne Meadows all the way through exiting at Whitney Portal. So we'll be getting up at five o'clock tomorrow morning, and then we'll be hitting the trail. In the meantime, me and Zuzu are going to go check out what else Tuolumne Meadows has to offer. All right, here we are down at Tuolumne Meadows at the Tuolumne Meadows Grill. There's also a store and a post office down here. Haven't been here since I did the PCT in 2015. Uh, we're gonna go in here and get ourselves a bite to eat. It's pretty amazing here, guys. This is the view just right across the street from the Tuolumne Meadows Grill and post office. So these are the kind of views we have to look forward to up on the trail. Oh, here I am in my hammock. We got a ride from a very nice lady uh, who took us from the lodge back to our campsite. We had to run up the hill in the rain. And uh, we're not even out on the John Muir Trail yet, and we are already in a thunderstorm. Zuzu is hunkered down in her tent over there. And uh, we just have to wait it out. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's an adventure already. Yeah. 
Good morning, everybody. It's 4.30 in the morning. I don't want to set for 5 o'clock, but I can't sleep anymore. But it's time to get up, back down to camp, get ready for our first day for the John Muir Trail. So it's about 5.30 in the morning, and it is uh, definitely too dark for you guys to see very well, but you can probably hear that it is raining. You might be able to see some of the water dripping down right next to my trekking pole right there, coming off my tarp. It's day one. The weather report says this was supposed to be done by now. Now it says it might be done by six o'clock. I'm not sure if I believe them, but one way or another, it's time to get started. Well, we are all packed up and ready to go. Yay. It's wet, it's miserable, but we're hiking to John Muir. Here we go. Well, right now, me and Zuzu are hiking down the PCT, heading to the John Muir Trail Junction. We've got some deer up ahead that don't seem to be afraid of people, at least not very much. John Muir Trail, 12.1 miles to Donahue Pass. This is our first major water crossing. This is everything you come to expect from the GMT right here. Side of the day that maybe we'll actually get some sunshine. The weather report is one big lie. We no longer believe anything that it says. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and at this point, it's a debate as to whether or not we're going to stop before Donahue Pass and camp, or if we're just going to uh, keep on going and try to camp somewhere on the other side of it. So, stay tuned for that. There you go. Looking good. Yeah. Current. like a boss. So the sun has actually come out. Yay! <laughs> it's definitely improved Zuzu's mood and we get to scud our uh, stuff out on these rocks, drying it out. It's been raining on us since we've been in camp before we started the trail yesterday. So Zuzu's drying a tent. I'm driving on uh, my rain fly from a hammock and then uh, we're going to head onward. We made it to camp. 
Anthony, it's only noon. And uh, so we had a first climb for the day. That must have been, what, a mile up maybe? Yeah, probably. And uh, we discovered that uh, we're not in very good shape. Not at all. So uh, we, uh, I was, uh, in the last third, I think I was stopping like every 30 feet. But we did find this beautiful camp here. So uh, we're calling it an early day. We did make our uh, 11 mile quarter for the day. We have to average at least 11 miles every day in order to make it in time. So we got here. Uh, we're going to set up camp that we'd like to eat. Might even take a siesta. But uh, check this out, guys. This is a beautiful spot right down by the river. Time to set up camp. Day two, six o'clock in the morning. We've got 2.7 miles to Donahue Pass. Time to get up and get some breakfast. Well, it's just after seven in the morning and Zuzu is just up ahead. We're making the climb up toward Donahue Pass. It'll be our first pass of the journey. I think there are a total of nine passes on the entirety of the JMT, I think. Obviously that's not all of the ups and downs. But we're taking it slow up the staircase and uh, hopefully we're gonna get to camp somewhere past Rosalie Lake tonight. And that should put us at somewhere between 11 and 12 miles for the day. <laughs> Here we are, Epic and Zuzu at the top of that hill. Well, we're about five miles into the second day. We just stopped to have ourselves a little lunch break. We're hoping to make it at least 12 today. We may go further. What time is it right now, Zoom? It is 11.30. 11.30, five miles in. We left uh, camp at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. So we're not making bad time for people who have been out of the hiking game for a little while. It's beautiful out here. The sun is shining. And we're hiking the John Muir Trail. Second climb of the day today, and we're on our way up to Island Pass. That'll be two passes down out of once again, I think nine passes. We got a high of 71 degrees today. It's gorgeous out here. Mountains all the way around, all those snow capped peaks. We're so tiny out here. Well, we're at the top of Island Pass, surrounded by mountains. It's gorgeous out here. What are you doing today? <laughs> Just after four o'clock in the afternoon, me and Zuzu are 
0.4 away from where we're gonna be camping for the night. It's gonna be dry camping. So we picked up three liters of water each down the trail a little bit. Today's gonna be a 14 for us. One of two passes. Not bad for day two. Time to uh, put together our camp. And both of us are starving, so dinner is on the way. Well, we're sitting down at dinner. And Zuzu here is vegan. So she's having Southwestern style quinoa and brown rice. With oil. With oil. <clears throat> and I am cooking macaroni and cheese. Which I will also put Parmesan in. Because that will be delicious. Well, dinner's done. Hammock set up. Camp chores are done. It's been a tough 14er today. It's time for bed. It's the end of day two. More to come tomorrow. Well, it is the morning of day three. We have 11.4 miles to Red's Meadow. And then uh, we're going to stop there, resupply, get a hot meal. Here we go. Well, it is just about 7 o'clock in the morning. We are on trail, heading towards Red's Meadow. I am motivated by cheeseburgers. Uh, Zuzu is not. She catches you today again, so we're going to see if we can find her a garden burger. But yeah, that hunger from yesterday is starting to kick in. And uh, I'm ready for a hot meal. Devil's Post Pile National Monument. Boundary. Double cheeseburger. This is going to be so good. Still waiting on yours, huh? Should I eat in front of you or should I wait? <laughs> totally got you. I might have overreached. <laughs> it's good though. Well, about five minutes away from Red's Meadow, there is a little campground that's owned by them. It's off season right now. It's usually twenty-three dollars per night, but the guy behind the counter says we can camp down here for free. Just got my hammock set up, and uh, we found this beautiful little spot right next to a stream. So we get plenty of water supply. It is only well, about one o'clock in the afternoon right now. So we finished just about 12 miles in, uh, by noon. And now uh, we're gonna do things like charge up batteries and uh, get our camp all set up and relax for the rest of the day. Well, me and Zuzu are walking down a dirt road here. It's evening at uh, Red's Meadow Resort. There's a wildfire that's off in the distance. And uh, there's this chopper that keeps coming by and dipping into a lake that's not too far, too far from us and picking up its water. It's made several passes. So we're going to walk down to the lake and see if we can catch the fire chopper uh, reloading with water. So wish us luck. Wow.
was epic. Well, I got my bear canister all packed up with all kinds of goodies. This is a four day resupply and it's filled to the brim. Hopefully I can be efficient with my MTR bucket because that's going to be a five day resupply. But I'm going to be rolling out of Red's Meadow way down and heavy again. So, kind of a sad moment here, guys. Um, Zuzu's actually going to be getting off trail here at Red's Meadow. She's got some personal things that have come up at home that are going to be calling her off the trail and back to her home in Pittsburgh. So, I'm going to be continuing on from Red's Meadow as a solo act. So, I'm going to miss her on trail, but uh, we're going to charge forward. And Zuzu has gotten on the Eastern Sierra Transit. Headed uh, back down into Mammoth Lakes. She will be making the journey home. I am charging up my electronic stuff and uh, we'll be heading out very shortly.